didn't delve into politics, but Barnum definitely did. Charity wasn't his childhood sweetheart. What the film portrays, the central relationship in the film is Barnum's romance with his wife, Charity. According to the film, the two developed feelings for one another in childhood, and gaining Charity's hand in marriage was an early source of motivation for the penniless young dreamer. What really happened, Barnum and Charity Hallett didn't meet until after his father had died, which means the couple didn't have a shared childhood. Instead, the teenage Barnum and Hallett seem to have met randomly and somewhat romantically in Bethel, Connecticut, during a storm. Barnum decided to marry her a few years later because, in his own words, she continued to stand highest in my estimation and to improve upon acquaintance. The film loved bar scenes, even though Barnum came to hate demon liquor. The film loved bar scenes, even though Barnum came to hate demon liquor. Jenny Lind did enter her American tour early, but not for the reasons the film cited. Jenny Lind did end her American tour early, but not for the reasons the film cited. The film completely erased the fact that Barnum's business was racist. The film completely erased the fact that Barnum's business was racist. Sorry, but Zac Efron's character never existed, and neither did Zendaya's. What the film portrays, one of the most sympathetic love stories in the film is the interracial romance between Zac Efron's character Philip Carlyle and Zendaya's Anne Wheeler, a trapeze artist. Carlyle, a white man who grew up in New York high society, is initially ashamed of his feelings for Wheeler, a black performer in Barnum's show, especially since the racist world seems to be against them. What actually happened? Yes, it's a compelling love story, but it's also 100% fictional. Neither Carlisle nor Wheeler actually existed. Instead of confronting the actual racism that ran through Barnum's entertainment ventures, the film concocted a sympathetic love story that made Barnum appear more tolerant than he actually was. Barnum's orphan origin story just wasn't true. What the film portrays, the beginning of the film tells Barnum's supposed origin story. His father is a tailor who dies when Barnum is still a child, and there is no mother in sight. After his father's death, the young Barnum seems to live in poverty and even steals food to survive. What really happened, his father was indeed a tailor who died when Barnum was young. But Barnum was 15 when it happened old enough in the 19th century to make his own way, and that's just what he did. Though he lost his father in 1825, Barnum didn't lose his whole family, and he worked to generate an income for his mother and five siblings. In fact, he wouldn't be orphaned until his mother died at the ripe old age of 83 in 1868. It was Barnum's family, not his wife's, that opposed his marriage to Charity Hallett. What the film portrays, the whole world seems to be against P. Barnum, even his in-laws. His wife Charity is a privileged, angelic young woman from a ridiculously wealthy family who lives in a mansion by the sea. Her father in particular grumbles about losing his daughter to the poor and good-for-nothing P. Barnum. Becoming a successful showman is Barnum's way of sticking it to the man and proving his father-in-law wrong. What really happened, Charity wasn't the rich girl, that the film makes her out to be she was actually a tailor's when Barnum first met her. So it wasn't her well-to-do family that was turning its nose up at Barnum's offer of a dollar, and a dream it was actually his own family. 
as Barnum himself recounted. My good mother and some other relatives feared that I was not looking high enough in the world when he decided to marry Charity. The couple married in New York City in 1829 without any of Barnum's family present. Bearded Lady's story was a whole lot sadder than what the film showed. What the film portrays, one of the most moving, commanding characters in the film is Letty Lux, known as the Bearded Lady. When Barnum is on the hunt for unique acts, people, and curiosities to bring to his American museum, he first hears Lutz's singing voice and follows it to a laundry room, where he finds an adult woman with a beard. Though she is reluctant to join Barnum's show, he manages to convince her. She is one of many so-called freaks in the film, whose outsider status is marked on their bodies. What really happened, Letty Lux never existed. Barnum's famous bearded lady was actually a woman by the name of Annie Jones. Barnum didn't find her in a laundry room, either. She attracted attention when she was born covered in hair in Virginia, 1865. He actually started exhibiting her when she was only one year old. Though Barnum paid her parents a week for the privilege, the young Jones did not get a say in how her body was displayed. She spent much of her life as an attraction and died when she was only 37 in 1902. Jenny Lynn was a lot more than arm candy for P. Barnum. What the film portrays, P. Barnum first meets the singer Jenny Lind in London, and he is immediately taken with her. He builds a professional relationship with her that comes dangerously close to being intimate, especially after Lind declares her feelings for him. What really happened, Jenny Lind, the so-called Swedish Nightingale, was the Adele of her age. Yet, the film reduces her to a symbol of decadence and beauty that threatens to seduce Barnum away from his principles, his family, and his performers. In reality, she had a successful career. While she did apparently break the heart of several significant men of the 19th century, including Hans Christian Andersen and Felix Mendelssohn P., Barnum was definitely not one of them. Her goals for her American tour were strictly philanthropic. She was raising money for a school in Sweden, and she didn't particularly like Barnum. She married German pianist Otto Goldschmidt in 1852. The film forgot to mention the time Barnum bought an elderly slave and put her on display. What the film portrays when Barnum strikes on the idea of starting a museum with living curiosity's eye. People with unique features or disabilities he holds open auditions to round out his cast list. He also tracks down a handful of star performers like the bearded lady and General Tom Thumb. What really happened, P. Barnum owed his first success in show business to a slave woman whom he leased in 1835. When he was 25 years old, slavery was technically illegal in northern states at this time. Joyce Heth was an elderly woman, and he promoted her as George Washington's 161-year-old mammy. He brought the old woman on tour, even though she was unwell, had difficulty moving, and was completely blind. Though Barnum displayed her for many hours at a time, Heth herself never received a penny of the money made off her. After she died in 1836, Barnum subjected her body to one final indignity. He convinced no less than 1,500 people to pay to watch Heth's autopsy. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and like and comment down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.